This was one of our favorite places to come and play army men when we were kids. One or two people would be the gunners and they'd call the shots in just like just like an artillery spotter. <laughs> 41 years old and it still makes my heart beat faster to lob dirt clods at green army men in the sandbox. This is a pug. This is a paintball tank. We play, uh, we play paintball in it and uh, we shoot Nerf rockets at each other. <laughs> This is the next step up in toy tanks. These walk the line between costume and toy. One hand on your forward frame and put the other hand on your back frame so you can pick the whole thing up. Well, they're called Flintstone tanks because we do the whole Flintstone thing. You hoik it up and you just pebble around in it. It's just the only motive power in these things are our two feet. So it's just like it's just like Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble in their uh, in their cars. You pick it up and you scoot boots. There are two kinds of tanks. There are the small human powered tanks like the Pug, and there are the the big motorized mamas like this. We use the big tanks to dominate positions on the field and to insert troops, and we use the small tanks in, in guerrilla hit and run to, to make break holes in the opponent's defense. For the motherland, is what that says in Russian. The tanker mindset is actually pretty fundamental. It's uh, have a bigger toy than the next guy so you can just pound them, you know. The truck is basically, it's not really a tank, it's an armored personnel carrier. So we transport troops into and out of battles and we try to make life as miserable for the other team as we can. They've got air conditioning, they've got stereo systems, they've got thousands and thousands of rounds of paint and we only have what we can carry. An Illinois state trooper walked up to us at a rest area and he goes, just what in the Sam Hill is this all about? And it took me about 20 minutes to explain to him that no, we're not terrorists, we're paintballers. Paintball tanking is a way I can combine my two great passions, building strange things and playing in the woods. I don't feel any more of a fool inside a pug than I do outside of a pug. Basically, human amusement is essentially absurd. Uh, to me, golf is every bit as absurd as what I'm doing. Hey, move out. As long as there's been tanks, there have been fake tanks um, used in actual warfare. One of, the, one of the inspirations for the pug was a photograph I saw of a World War II British decoy team building fake uh, M M3 Stuarts out in the desert. The light bulb went off at that point, and it's like, you know, we could use something like that in paintball. Playing in a pug is playing hide-and-seek with paintballs. I'm really good at sneaking up on people, but strap on 30 pounds of armor and go out, that's an even bigger rush because if they turn around and see a tank, they all, you know, it's like, <gasps> Someone's out of here! I don't see it as destruction, and that's, that's precisely the difference between war play and war. War is about deliberately destroying the social cohesion of another people. This isn't about that. I, I don't know exactly what, is it, what it is about, but I'm quite certain it's not about that. Everybody likes to play around with something in their garage or the backyard, and it's just that uh, fun of the sport, you know, building something that you can say, I did that, that's mine. I don't care what anybody else thinks or says about it, because, you know, that's yours. Maybe it's my inner child that I need to feed on occasion, you know, to get back in the woods and, you know, bang your dead, or... Except now that I make good money, I can have bigger toys.